Shabbat Shalom. So as we just read a, a moment ago, this Torah portion has Joseph, and it says uh, he's, he's uh, given favor and, uh, in, in, in prison, and he's given responsibility over everybody in prison, and, uh, and God makes him successful, and God's with him. But as I read it, it doesn't, I don't know if I would have felt like God was with me or that he was making me successful because this is happening when he's in prison. I don't know how I much feel the favor of God when I'm in prison for something I didn't do. But that's where Joseph is in the passage that we just read. And this passage kind of takes us from the beginning of Joseph's story and leaves us at a place that seems like despair. And it begins... In a, it's so much better. It begins that he's 17 years old. He's his father's favorite son, and he loves him, and he has a special love for him. And that special love causes his brothers to resent him, to feel like their father has favoritism from him. And then it seems like it's downhill from there. And the rest of this Torah portion, what I see is, is Joseph betrayed by his brothers whom he loves, unjustly and unfairly accused by a master that he serves as his slave, and then forgotten by people he helps in prison. And even though it says God was with him, I feel like, God, couldn't you have intervened in any of these circumstances? But we get to the end of the Torah portion and we're left with, and he is forgotten uh, by the people he helped. That's all that we're left with. It, it begins with, he's with, his father sends him out and he says, go to see your brothers as they're tending my sheep and I want to know how they're doing. I'm looking out for their welfare. And so he goes to his brothers to see how they're doing because him and his father care about them. And it says while he's off in a distance, his brothers see him and they plot to kill him. And eventually they decide, okay, we're just going to throw him into a pit and let him die there. And then they say, okay, well, I guess instead we'll sell him into slavery. And so they sell him into slavery and he's taken to Egypt and he's bought there by the, uh, the commander of the Pharaoh's uh, bodyguard. And then it seems like things are maybe looking up and uh, God blesses him, it says, and gives him favor of the, of the house. And then he's unjustly accused of assault and he winds up in prison. And while he's in prison, he gains favor with the commander of the prison. He's given more responsibility. And then uh, two people come to him and he's, he's asked to take care of them, the chief uh, cupbearer and the chief of the bakers. He helps them and he interprets their dream. And then he's forgotten when the chief... Uh, the chief cupbearer uh, returns to status with Pharaoh. So in this passage, he's betrayed by his brothers. He's uh, thrown into prison for something he didn't do by people he tried to serve. And then he's forgotten. And as we look at this passage, it says God's with him. But I don't know if he felt that way. In our lives, there are, there are probably times where it seems like, God, where are you? You say you're with me, but it doesn't feel like that. But as, as, we, as we feel that way, we can know that our Messiah knows what it was like and that he suffered like Joseph did and he suffered like we did. Uh, Joseph was betrayed by his brothers whom he loved and Yeshua was turned into the Roman soldiers by people whom he loved. It says that they stripped Joseph of his tunic that his father had given him and it says that when Yeshua was being tortured uh, by, the, by the Romans, they took his tunic off. It says his brother sold him for 20 pieces of silver and Yeshua was sold for pieces of silver as well. And so in life, when it, when it feels like we don't know where God is and he's not intervening, we can know that Yeshua knows our pain that he too suffered. And when, when Joseph is abandoned in the pit and he, he's maybe wondering where is God now or abandoned in prison and wondering where God is now, Yeshua went up on the tree. He cried out, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And we can know that because Yeshua felt forsaken, because Yeshua gave up uh, knowing the Father's love and, and felt forsaken on the tree because he went through death and torture for the forgiveness of our sins, we can know that we'll never be separated from our Father. And that we can know that even when it feels like that God is not with us, we can know that because of Yeshua's death and resurrection, even when it feels that way, the reality is God is with us. And at the end of this Torah portion, I don't think Joseph knows what his life is going to look like. And in the midst of what we're going through, I don't think we always know what it's going to look like. But we know, Joseph doesn't know yet, but we know what his story turns out like. And we can know because of Yeshua's death and resurrection 
while we don't know how we're going to get there or how long uh, it's going to last, that God is with us and he will keep his promises and he is not going to forsake us. And though we might be forgotten by other people or betrayed, God is never going to betray us or forsake us or forget us. And this is the encouragement we can find in the story of Joseph. Shabbat Shalom.